was squabbling amongst itself, the, the, the Corinthians. He said, therefore, let no one boast in men, for all things are yours. 1 Corinthians 3, 21 and 22, whether Paul or Apollos or Cephas or the world or life or death or things present or things to come, all are yours. And you are Christ's. And Christ is God. And guess what? God is yours too. Didn't the scripture say we are heirs of God, so God is a part of our inheritance too, isn't it? <laughs> isn't he? Sure he is. What did, remember when Abraham was on this pilgrimage with God in Genesis 15, and God appears to him, and he's fearful about some things, and God says to him, don't be afraid, A Abram, I am your shield and your exceeding great reward. I am your reward. And you know what, friends, when God becomes your inheritance, with God comes everything. Isn't that true? Because Abram said, well, God, I've got this issue. I've got this passion in my heart. You see, uh, I'm childless, and the one who's going to inherit my estate is, is not someone of my, uh, 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 from my flesh. You have given me no children. And God took him out and said, look up to the heavens and count the stars. If you can count them, so shall your offspring be. Abram, you're complaining about not having a child. I'm going to give you descendants that can't be counted. Friends, when he says everything, he means everything. Now, obviously, he was speaking of a future date with Abraham, wasn't he? He was speaking of the church age. He was speaking of God was looking forward prophetically and speaking of you and I. We are the children of Abraham through faith in Christ. So some things, friends, that, that God gives us in adoption doesn't mean we get it today. It awaits a future realization. Are you with me? But what do we get in the present, folks? What do we get in the present? If we're the adopted children of God, what do we get in the present? We get a relationship. And the, perhaps this is the most important thing I've said. And look at, the, look at the, the nature of this relationship. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry, Abba, Father. Now, friends, there's something I saw this week that I never saw before, and I'm, I'm sure millions have seen it. It just was something I noticed for the first time. We receive a spirit of adoption by, we, by whom we cry, Abba, Father. Friends, the word Abba is simply an Aramaic word for Father. It's just the Aramaic word to say Father. Uh, pater is the actual Greek word for Father. In the New Testament, the Gospels, uh, Acts, the Epistles, Revelation was all written in Greek. So this was this would have been the word that was in the original in the original manuscripts. When you read this particular verse in the Amplified Version, here's how it reads. For the spirit which you have now received is not a spirit of slavery to put you once more in bondage of fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption, the spirit producing sonship in the bliss of which we cry, Father, Father. Father, Father. See that? What is Paul trying to say? Ladies and gentlemen, listen carefully. What he's trying to say in my estimation is this. When you become an adoptive child of God, you enter into the reality of a relationship that is more meaningful, more empowering, more intimate, more intense, more substantial than anything that you could attain in life. It is the most 
important relationship. It is the most substantial relationship that a person can have. So therefore, let me, let me continue to develop this idea. You know, when we go to pray, we wonder if anybody out there is listening. But Jesus said, because we have now been adopted by a father, he said, ask and it will be given unto you. It will. Well, what if I don't receive from the father through asking? He said, seek and you'll find it. What if that doesn't uh, secure the provision I'm looking for? Knock, and the door will be open unto you. Why? Because everyone who asks receives everyone. Everybody say everyone. See, adopted children, they, they ultimately get what? Everything. Everyone who asks receives. He who seeks finds and to him who knocks, the door will be open. How can that be? You have a real relationship now. It's, it's, it's actual. It's reality. It's not, it's not some pipe dream. It's true. God is your father. Which of you, if his son asks for bread, will he give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will he give him a snake? If you then... Though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children. How much more will father, father? See, that's what asking and seeking and knocking implies. You're not, you're saying, Dad, 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 and he's going to respond. Why? Because he's your father. How much more will father, father, give good gifts? to those who ask him. Therefore, I tell you, don't worry about your life. What you will eat or drink, about your body, what you will wear, look at the birds of the air. They don't sow or reap or store away in barns, yet Father, Father, takes care of them. Are you not more, much more valuable to him than they? Come on, folks. Friend, this will get you off your anxiety pills. You can hear what I'm saying. Now, is everybody with me? Friends, we enter into a relationship of all relationships. All of a sudden, all these covenant names, Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah, throw them away. God, Jesus said, he's got one covenant name with you now. What? Father, Father. That's it. That's the covenant name he has with you, New Testament believer, adopted child of God, Dad. See, isn't it beautiful how Jesus simplifies it? Father. Now, this is also, also uh, the explanation why so many prayers go unanswered, apparently. You know, we, we talk about unanswered prayer. Well, quite frankly, there is no such thing as an unanswered prayer from a child of God who has a spirit of adoption in them. Every prayer gets answered. Not the way you think it should. Every prayer gets answered, child of God. Every prayer is answered. Every single one. Who of you would turn a deaf ear to the child saying, Father, Father? None of us would. Amen? But to me, friends, this explains why some prayers apparently aren't answered. Why is that? Let me show you the example of Jesus. And he said, Mark 14, 36, Father, Father, all things are possible for you. Take this cup from me. Nevertheless, not what I will, but you will. Ladies and gentlemen, Jesus' prayer 
originally was not answered the way he asked it. Why? Because he was praying to Father, Father. Why did not God answer the prayer according to the will of the Son? But why did he eventually, Jesus, uh, he made a concession and accepted the will of the Father? Here's the reason, friends. The will of God is rooted into eternity. The purpose of us as adoptive sons or daughters is rooted into eternity. What's eternity? <laughs> you know, we, we, you know, what's, what, you know we, we've been showing this, these videos of people stepping through the door of death, and they said there's, a, there's this incredible sense you get. You walk into a, a place of timelessness. It doesn't exist. It's like time just, you just somehow know. Time just doesn't exist. I'm in this never-ending realm. It just goes on and on and on and on. And you know, brothers and sisters, the Bible tells us that we were, we were predestined, and, he, and we have to use these words to comprehend this. We were predestined by God to be adoptive children in eternity past. But God deals with us in the present to prepare us for eternity future. And because Father, Father's will for us is rooted in eternity, look at this. In Him we were chosen, having been predestined according to the plan of Him who works out everything in conformity to the purpose of His will. And, and ladies and gentlemen, what does His will, what is His will? Ephesians 1, 9 says, He's made known to us the pleasure of His will which is to bring all things in heaven and on earth together under one head, who is Christ. Because our purpose in Christ, Ephesians 3.11 says, is eternal, God will, answers our, he will answer the prayer of his children with eternity in mind. Does that help you out this morning? That explains a lot of things, doesn't it? Hebrews 5.1, during the days of Jesus' life, during the days, in the realm of time, in the realm of time, he offered up prayers and petitions with, with loud cries and tears. With loud cries and tears. What does that imply? What does that imply, ladies and gentlemen? Dad's will was difficult. He cried. And, and, and friends, again, we receive a spirit by which we cry, Father. It's not like, is God your Father? We can.